Hi, how you doing? It's Tony the Soy Sauce Assassin. How is everybody's Saturday? Uh, this is what you guys usually don't see me in, but I told you guys I would dress up, so I guess I'll put something out. Okay, I put something out. But this is not like my fully dressed to work dress because uh, uh, this is more like one of those celebratory. Uh, after talking about business, sign a contract, I'm going to get lay kind of clothing, okay? So, if you see me like this, it's probably because I'm going to a party uh, for, you know, signing a contract or successful something, uh, you know, because usually when I chat with the client, I'm all in black. So, uh, something like this, uh, which is like a navy gray, um, it's slightly different, okay? Slightly different. So, yeah, don't get too excited. This is my... I'm gonna get late tonight, kind of, uh, kind of suit. Not my, not my particular uh, going to the client suit. So that's how I usually look like when I go to work uh, to the client uh, at night. You know, when we're chatting about stuff, uh, celebrate a good business deal or uh, things like that. You know, so I, I think today, you know, we just gotta do Oro Blanco for the very first time, and I'll talk about my get up too. I guess that's all I can do. So. Uh, I'm gonna get comfortable. I just gotta take the jacket off a little bit because, you know, that's how it is, right? Okay. Anyways, put my cell phone to the side. Uh, you know, talking to business, you definitely want to make sure your phone's on vibrate. Put to the side. Of course, we have a little bit of drinks here, and uh, just in case, this and that. Okay. So as promised, let's go. First, let's go with some music. Too cool for me. Uh, let's do. It's almost like strip show, almost. Anyway, I want to say hi to everybody first. So we have Juan, we have Michael, first two here. And then we have uh, Jared, we have Michael again, and Juan again, and then Cryptic Mole. We have Cryptic Mole, we have Greg. So, like I promised, I will smoke this live with you guys. This is Oro Blanco, and I believe majority, if not 90% of the Oro Blancos are um, produced, uh, uh, produced in 2002 and they aged until today all right so that's why they're so expensive because they're supposed to be rare right they're supposed to be rare Ooh. what did i do of course first coming on the youtube liked it <laughs> Okay, so we'll try to get the 1502 the longest as possible. Uh, morning, James. What's going on? So as promised, I dressed up for you guys. I'll kind of explain this to you guys a little bit uh, in a minute. But let's talk about this, okay? So Davidoff, Oro Blanco, Special Reserve 2002. They all pr pretty much produced in 2002 uh, by one particular master blender. And I believe these are Puros. They're Dominican Puros. Everything is Dominican, all right? In and out, Dominican. And this is the size, it's like six by six by 54. I, I remember it's Grand Toro, all right, Grand Toro, in this nicely put, uh, put together box, all right? This box is very nicely put together. Uh, it's got its own cedar spills in there, and it's got a cigar in there. Uh, it's got a drawer, okay? Uh, one of the things that if you didn't put in correctly, it will get really hard to pull, pull it out. And if you put it backwards, oh, may the Lord save your soul. And when you put it backwards in, it's really hard to get out, okay? That's how the, the drawer end, it has a little bit of, you know, like a metallic part here to make sure that this part doesn't rot and can't pull it out. I got extra just to see me smoke this. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, this, it has, a, it says Master Blender, somebody, somebody, which I can't read. 
I don't think anybody can read that signature, but you know, for all you know, that could be Davidoff himself. <laughs> all right, and then you get this part up. This is the seed spill they expect you to use. We will, we will use this today, okay? Let's use this today. It gets a little hard, but yeah, it is pretty heavy. And then you got this little ribbon to pull this up, which is nothing too, too special because majority of the boxes I got does have it. Now, this is a single coffin. They do make a box of 10, which is like, what, $5,000? So this is not for the faint of heart. I'm surprised you can get anything up anymore. <laughs> Okay. All right. So this is done in a, in a decoration of gold lettering and so and white gold all around it. But majority of people is not gonna find that the decoration itself is five hundred dollar worth. You know, it's five hundred dollar worth of cigar. It's crazy. And this is only uh, five hundred dollars in the U.S. Everywhere else costs more than $500. I know in South Korea, if you should buy this cigar, it's $1,000. $1,000 for this cigar, right? In Japan, I think it was 700 something in places. So it depends where you buy them. Uh, I do not buy them overseas. I will buy them here because this is the only part that sells for the cheapest because this is expensive. All right? Now, let's get, let the, let's get this going. Let's get this going. And, and while I'm smoking this, I'll, I'll kind of explain to me, uh, you guys about, um, the get up, right? The cost of dressing up to go to a client. Okay, so. Cost of dressing up to go to a client. Uh, if you're smoking something, you better tell me why you're smoking because the king of cigars is here. It demands to know what the peasant is smoking. The king of cigars is here. Oh, very nicely. If anything, this thing is nicely fermented. It's been aged for a long time, very carefully. The caps are large, and uh, there's almost no visible vein. Nice, nice dark chocolate color. For 490 is actually more than 500 here, so... What's up? I got some service where I am at. I don't want to miss this. This makes me happy to smoke this oral. <laughs> Thanks. So yeah, in honor of you guys, thank you for sending this to me. Uh, don't do that next time because uh, I will feel bad. You know, this is a cigar that I do by myself. I, I have a couple up upstairs still, but I will smoke the one that you guys sent over. And this is the one you guys sent over. <laughs> Yamasa has joined Davidoff. Okay, 1502, Blue Sapphire and Cyril here. Very easily cut through. Nice Vika. There you go. Very deep Vika. This cigar can definitely take some Vika because the cap is this deep. The, see that? You can see the t color difference. That's where the cap ends. The cap is super deep on this thing. You don't have to worry about this unravel for any reason. Let's pre-light this just a tad and then we'll light it with the cedar spill. You gotta take time on this, you know. I, I, when I smoke this cigar, I take my time. And I have to say, I think this will be the first complete Oro Blanco review on YouTube because I can't find any other ones. <laughs> Shadow Smokers Legion has it first. Shadow Smokers Legion has it first, all right? Oh my god, that taste. Citrusy, woodsy, cedary, tad of bitterness at the end, and uh, a very subtle flat pepper. All right, 
very creamy. Very creamy. It does require a little bit touch up because I don't I don't want it to burn uneven. So let me just touch up the side just a tad. Very very creamy, the smoke you can literally see. This is <clears throat> good smoke production over here per draw. The draw is perfect, just slightly tough for my liking, but it's perfect for this particular cigar. Um, smoking a Grand Habano Corojo Number no. Five, smoking a Fuente Don Carlos Personal Reserve Robusto, and only cost us five hundred for this review. <laughs> It cost me about two hundred dollars worth of dry cleaning. <laughs> oh, so good! So if you smoke this cigar in the beginning, you are gonna taste. By the way, I will put up a, like a thirty plus second review. Uh, uh, for those people that don't want to sit through like two hours of this review, okay? You get pepper, you get white mushroom on this, okay? You get white mushroom. Pepper, creaminess, vanilla, and um, everybody should be liking this video. This will be the first full Oro Blanco review on YouTube. Alright, so you get all those. You get, you actually get tobacco taste to this, okay? And I don't know if you guys can tell what tobacco taste is like. That little bit bitterness at the end is what tobacco should taste like. Fermented tobacco. Now, it doesn't taste like cigarette. It just tastes like the aroma from like a, perfume, a cologne or perfume. And you get out a little bit of the creamy coffee-like taste too. But it kind of just dis disappears between the white mushroom taste again. So it's, you can tell this thing is fermented to a, to, to a tea, right? This is up there. Now, there's also a little bit of a, a different taste to it. It's called virgin's tear okay when you smoke this you are you are tasting your own tear dropping down here you know that money that you could have go to go on a date that get you laid went on this all right it, it, this you gotta divide it by four quarters each quarter is 125 dollars so this much is 125 dollars that could have buy you two dinners and a lay So yeah, this cigar is definitely a cigar to enjoy even from the very beginning. Of course, you got to use their little cedar spill to do it. And um, strength is about medium to medium full. Depends how fast you're smoking. But if you're smoking that fast that you're feeling sick, uh, you have some issues. You have some big issues if you're smoking this that fast, okay? Once you get it pretty lit, then you should slow down. Now, what we gotta do when, while I'm slowing down, let's introduce you guys to the I'm getting late, Tony. All right, I'm getting late, Tony. So today's suit is brought to you by a custom suit. This is a custom suit. One of those things you go out and they come to your place and they measure your shoulder, your arm, everything, and then they produce a suit of your liking, your fabric, and for me, this is it, all right? Take a good look, you know? Sports coat, very nicely. I, de I debated whether or not to wear a uh, uh, a French cuff to for you guys today, but I don't want to get my French cuff too dirty, so French cuff is really hard to wash, and they are usually white. I like this particular jacket because when you go to a party, I tend to leave my jacket somewhere. It gets uncomfortable when you sit down and you take off your jacket, and that's what I usually do. So I'll take off my jacket, and this is why attention to detail for suits is very important because you fit in exactly, right? You want to fit exactly, and you want to have something like this. All right, it is they sew your name into the shirt, custom tailor made for the, for for who, so that you know which one's yours. Inside is a metallic silky purple silk. All right, purple silk with a, a little bit of phone pocket here, which I don't really use. All right, and oh, I definitely have pants on. When, when I dress up, I dress up all the way, yo. I don't dress up halfway. I dress up all the way. All right. It 
It's super hot in here because I don't even have the heat on, but this jacket is super warm. So I'll put it to the side for now. All right, I'll put it to the side for now. Okay, next. This shirt. This shirt is a phone is is a custom shirt from a company called Kamakura. Kamakura, okay? And this tie also is Asian shirt, uh, Asian Kamakura tie. And then uh, I want to show you guys some some detail. It's just like a, you know, Asian multi print. And these what's so special is these are Mother Pros here. These are Mother Pro. I don't know if I can see, you guys can see it like The buttons are Mother Pro. The shirt custom fits, you know? All right, and of course, can I have your, you know, you gotta have your wedding rings, you gotta have your Rolex on. The hat is from Gordon Brothers, it's about $300 hat, very nice wool hat, brand. Same style as my usual hat, but you know, in wool. My glasses, by Ray-Ban, top and fiber frame, and steel on top. Uh, sweet suit. Is the, is it the light with almost like shark skin sheen on the coat? Uh, where? From the outside? From the outside? Now because this is a high weighted wool, so it looks like there's sheen to it. Yes, there is some sheen to it, but because it's made out of high quality wool, and also purple. I always have pocket, uh, pocket, Napkins, pocket, pocket squares. If you don't have pocket square, you're not wearing right, okay? Always have pocket square, even if you don't have a good looking one. Even just a white one, okay? So yeah, if you gotta go out, you gotta dress up. You gotta meet clients, you have to dress up. You cannot dress any worse than your client, so. very comfortable shirt it's actually these get up makes me quite warm right these get up makes me quite warm um it's not something that i wear all the time like i say i wear these to go to parties go to hang out with uh, clients um i don't usually go to dress up places unless it's with clients When you have high thread count of anything, you start to have sheen. You start to have the, the sheen to it. So, uh, in that particular suit, even in the dark, it actually looks like there's some sheen to it. So, you know, a lot of time you go to a nightclub, night party, drinking and stuff like that, it's perfect. So, yeah. That's one of my like 20 suits <laughs> uh, that I wear. That's why I told you this this particular feel costs a lot of money just to be, just to see clients because uh, you are the product. Like you as a person are the product. So when you go to see the client, the client has to see his product. He's, he's gonna see a hobo from the uh, Dorchester area or you know um, uh, some ghetto, or are they gonna see someone that? Looks knowledgeable, knows what I'm talking about, and actually can afford himself. And that's a very important part of it. I think I smoked just about $75 now. This is about $75. This cigar is so expensive that most people, first thing they ask is, is it worth $500? Like, what? Not, and the first thing they ask is, like, is it worth $500? And number two is, nothing's worth $500. Okay, that's usually what people say. What I'm drinking, I'm drinking the Yoichi 12 years. Is it 12 years? Yoichi 10 or Yoichi 12, one of the, one of the bottles. And added some water to it. I didn't want to add wa uh, ice, so I just add water. So I don't get drunk before I go up to my wife, you know. Cigar like this, you definitely want to go with a whiskey. It actually enhances that wood. Inside, if once you smoke this for just about $75, you, st you start to taste the sweetness, okay? There's a little bit of sweetness that comes through. 
and kind of enhance it, almost tastes like a truffle sweet. So it's actually a really special flavor, okay? Now, it's not a punch you in the face flavor, it's very elegant flavor, you can taste it. Almost a really nice fine wine or uh, you're having a warm meal, but it's not, it's not it's like, you know, having a nice gumbo, but that's not too salty or it's not too uh, sweet. It's just enough. So you get that umami going through and this cigar definitely have that. Sure, I've got four nice suits and those things are stored like gold. They aren't cheap. Yeah, uh, custom made suit are usually between one thousand to three thousand dollars for the jacket, and my pants are usually between seven hundred dollars to one thousand dollars for the suit pants. All right, um, the shirts are usually between five hundred dollars to fifteen hundred dollars. The ties are usually between three hundred dollars to I think the most expensive one I have a seven hundred fifty dollar tie. All right, so that's usually the case. And watch something like this watch right now retail. I think used are about twenty grand. Um, so if you go to used market, you find a stainless steel uh, Rolex coro uh, uh, chronographed is usually about twenty grand. Basically, every single one that you can get are 2002, all right? I think they all came from 2002, and once it's gone, it's gone. So, but they, they make shit, though. They, they just have a lot of those. You can go to any Davidoff and still find them. The thing is that they're so expensive, most people don't buy them, and they continue to age, all right? They continue to age after they, they're out there. So, they still have those. If you want them, they still have it. So yeah, I am not, like, I and at home, I, I hate wearing like this. I hate wearing like this at home. Uh, even though my wife might like it, I hate wearing like this at home. Because, you know, they're tight, they're not comfortable. Uh, they're good looking, sure, but that's pretty much it. I mean, other than good looking, what else do you have, right? What else do you have? So yeah, now... Because I'm in the basement, I don't want to wear shoes, so I'm not wearing shoes, so I'm not going to talk about shoes today, but I will put my jacket back on. I'm going to dry wash it anyway, so I don't care if this got smell, so... It makes me have bigger shoulders. They are getting rare, but I wouldn't worry about buying them. Like, you know, I should have to get it today or else I can never find them. Maybe if you go to regular Davidoff, then you should have more. Then you should have more. But yeah, smoking this right now literally makes me think about all the, all the past. All the, when, like, you know, sh when Shadow Smokes Legion started, well, before that started, like, you know, chatting with people, uh, when uh, Cigars Daily Nation had a uh, uh, um, trade group, that was great. Uh, and then we have, you know, I think that one of the first few people that I really got on with uh, in chat was uh, Christina, uh, Chris Powell, uh, and Joseph, I think. I think see, I see uh, Joseph in the beginning, too. You know, we really caught on we really caught on in the beginning so right now i'm getting a really sweet vanilla and that's natural sweet it's not even it's not even a sweetened cap or anything that's just natural sweet it's not a bad sweet but you get like sweet vanilla and then hints of pepper and then you eat, and then you get on the puff, you get a sweet creamy vanilla, and then you get you know this this is definitely an experience, okay? It's definitely experience. However, however, every puff you take takes like twenty bucks from you. Hey, 
every path you take takes 20 bucks from you. So, um, in turn of, is it worth $500? That's like that everybody you want to ask, right? It's why you're smoking it. Is it $500? Right? So it should be in the reverse. Would you spend five hundred dollar for this particular happiness? What would you not for this cigar, but would you pay five hundred dollar for this particular happiness? So it, it kind of it's the reverse psychology in here. You don't say is this cigar worth five hundred dollar for me to smoke? Is is this what you're doing? What the five hundred dollars that you're gonna spend? All right, this just an embellishment for your event that whatever you're going on is still rolling us. <laughs> You are not gonna find the flavor on this thing overwhelming or not complex enough. The reason I like the complexity of Davidoff is because I smoked one of these before. When I smoked it, I, I realized that every puff seems to have a slightly different variation and combination of the taste uh, that I'm picking up. So after that, I start to buy more Davidoff for that reason because I feel like all the Davidoff have a little bit of that complexity going on, even though it's not this. Very, very good. And it, when you taste this, you got to realize uh, that smells really good. And that's actually tobacco. You will be able to tell what a true tobacco should taste like. I'm talking about tobacco flavor notes. I'm not talking about like, oh, this is Dominican cigar. It should taste like this. I'm talking about tobacco. Right? You will be able to identify the note of tobacco right after you smoke this. So you can tell what tobacco smells like. Because it's very upfront. And you can tell that it's separate from all the other flavors. That is tobacco. Now, in turn, how often I smoke this, uh, I can tell you that every year, if my production uh, gross income hits over one million, I'll smoke one of these. So uh, last year, I smoked one or two of these. I remember I was doing the model kit, and I smoked one of those last year. My wife got to see a five hundred dollar look like when I opened it, and I guess I, I bet she's like, "That's it." <laughs> right. Um, it, like I say, it's what is worth to you. What is worth to you? Uh, what do you feel happy about? And I can tell you, like, even though when I signed uh, close to a million dollar deal uh, in terms of uh, representing or something like that, even that will go to a party, right? And the party will have cigars for us. And that's those cigars won't even be $500. It's something that you have to justify. Because you can find a million reasons for you to smoke. You can find a million reasons not to smoke, right? So if you decide to smoke this, you will come up with a million reasons. Sure. It, uh, if that was the case, everybody will have to pay the $500 entry cost to get one, right? We'll try to get boxes to see if we get 10% off and the rest of the, uh, covers the coin. <laughs> mm. A good whiskey will wash off and then reset and you can have that inter uh, entire roll around of flavor again. This is no joke. This is definitely a experienced cigar uh, that's for sure all right experienced cigar you everybody should put this as a bucket list not so much as a cigar I, I should smoke but a cigar would be nice if i tried it kind of thing because you get to experience some really nice transitions that is usually not in the american cigar i'm talking about nicaraguan dominican those cigars they give you a really quick taste and goes away and and, and then the transition is not not noticeable unless you're talking about one third at a time but something like this every puff has a transition every puff every draw has a little bit of a, a change a little bit of um, magic in it you know it's almost like smoking a really nice cologne all right now if you like Jew estate 
you know the Jewel Steak flavor cigars? They have this really strong flavor, especially something like uh, Cuba Cuba. Cuba Cuba. This thing has a little bit of aroma in there. I will say like 10% of what Cuba Cuba is like. So if you actually, it's like I can't handle Cuba Cuba because it's so much, so pungent, that flavor is so pungent. You get one of these, you will tell what 10% is like. It's like very bearable. It's like, it's almost enjoyable. Why is Michael not a mod on YouTube? I have no idea. I thought he is, but we can change that really quickly. Hold on a second. I just have to go to YouTube and change that. Mm, here we go. Done. Cigar show, Tim. Hi, Tim. Welcome. We're smoking the Oro Blanco from Davidoff today. This is one time I love my 10th anniversary, but only my first year coming up, so I have time to wait. Yeah, here's the thing though. You can gamble and wait to buy that, or you can buy it now and make sure you store it. But th this is one cigar that you do not want to see more on, okay? You want to store it. Uh, as best as you possibly can. You have to spend all the money to store this thing because this is the one cigar that you will not be able to, you know, withstand if it goes moldy or uh, for whatever reason. This is one cigar that you much rather buy it in store and, and make sure that it's good. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Ultimate power. <laughs> We just leave it to Brendan throw everyone in the fire. <laughs> okay, so today let's talk about something um, more upbeat, more upbeat. First, first of all, let's talk about. Um, Let's talk about, well, first of all, news, okay? Coronavirus, there is treatment now. There is a cure now. There is a vaccine being produced. They tried to produce 10, uh, 10 million copies of that vaccine, which will take three or four months. Uh, they will, um, and basically, people are just being quarantined and take it out and stuff like that. People are still dying. There are people suiciding after uh, the, uh, the disease, but it's actually not that bad. It's actually not that bad. Actually, uh, U.S. flu, common flu, continues to take people's life. I think the count is up to like 15,000 or 13,000 people died this year, uh, this winter season. So, and they are saying that there is a second strain of flu uh, going on in U.S. So, uh, we have the type A flu this year and type B flu is start to make its way over. So, make sure to keep warm. Make sure to keep away from sick people. Make sure to eat healthy so that you can, you know prevent yourself from having the type B which includes H1N1 so you really want to be very careful about that now today I did think about whether or not to wear like a tuxedo kind of thing with a bow tie and I, cha I changed my mind at the end because I, I don't I don't I have my bow tie nicely ironed and everything they're flat but once you tie a bow tie they wrinkle and it takes forever to adjust them. So, you know, I choose not to wear a bow tie. You know, tuxedo would be too too shiny. I didn't want to be like uh, the disco Tony, you know. But getting late Tony is good enough. Today, I did buy another pair of uh, um, Allen Almonds loafer. It was, I, I just figured out to like, oh, maybe you want to, I, I was thinking about dressed up today, you know. I was going out. I was thinking about what to dress. And then when I was thinking about where to, what to wear, I thought about shoes, and I, went, I walked right into Alan Atman's, and I bought a pair of shoes. Oh, yeah. Oh, the ash just fell down. But look at that. Look at that cherry. It's beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. The burn is great. The mascara line is great. 
definitely you want to pair with something. Don't pair with water though. Don't pair with soda. Pair with a whiskey that has a wood notes to it that will really enhance the drink itself. But yeah, um, the double seven, Tony. Uh, next time. <laughs> next time. I don't really wanna. Um, I don't really wanna dry wash a tuxedo suit because those are crazy hard to deal with. I'm smoking your share for you, Juan. I'm smoking it just for you. So yeah, I did a lot of research on YouTube all the time to see what what other people feel about Oro Blanco. I can never find one. I found people talk about they buying it, but I never find anybody that had a review about it. So we'll put out this review today. Hey, Aaron, Aaron, uh, Aaron, uh, hey, Aaron. Uh, so I think that we are the first one to put it out. And also I put out the 30 second review after. And um, I just had to figure out something what I'm going to put up. So how is the cigar? Good as usual. It's great. Even better because I feel like this cigar has the memory of all the member who pitched in. This is even more meaningful to just the cigar, right? Because every puff you're smoking is success. Is the is the magic of what a group could be. All right, success and magic of what a group could be. And uh, oh yeah, by the way, I like to tell you guys. So I did file for patent or not patent uh, trademark on our logo. It will be a stylized logo uh, for our skull one. So that way it protects the skull, it protects the words on the logo. So I defined it, Shadow Smoke Legion, and our tagline, in the shadow we unite. In the shadows we unite. So those two lines will be patented in the skull. Now, <laughs> now I want to um, kind of talk about... Uh, uh, um, the situation of trademark here okay now i don't want to mention names cause we, but we all know what we're talking about so we're not going to mention names just in case it, it matters to his case but let's talk about trademark here okay now that i'm dressed out let's talk about business okay let's talk about business trademark now trademark always has a gray line to what you can use what you cannot use okay that's what trademark usually does Tamara, where's Tamara? Am I missing something? Tamara Chapin, here we go. Hi everyone, it's Chapin's wife. I can't have him all the fun commenting. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> uh, welcome Tamara. Am I pronouncing that right, Tamara? So, trademark is, is kind of like a great area because in US, they, they recognize you have the trademark the moment that you start using your logo. All right. If no one contested, you own the trademark for that. But however, there's a there's a thing about trademark in the U.S. They only recognize it if you utilize it to make money. You utilize it to make money. Something is being sold, even if it's for a dollar. The moment that you make money from it, you own that trademark. You cannot go register a trademark that doesn't do anything. It's not involving sales, not involving costs, anything that has a cost. If it doesn't do that, you cannot trademark it. All right, you cannot say I want to trademark this logo, but I never sell anything with this logo. That will be abandoned. <laughs> that will be abandoned immediately. Okay, actually, you will wait for three months and they will abandon it. Because if you cannot prove that you're actually using this logo or a name or something like that, it cannot be trademarked. All right, what government does is basically become a third person that recognizes you are using this to make money. Okay, so that is it's a huge difference between uh, I, I have this logo created, do I own this right? But if there's no money involved, you don't own it outright. People can contest that, okay? Talk too much, gotta, I had to rescue it. I cannot let it go. All right. So next, uh, in terms of this particular cases, if a company owns a trademark, 
and they can sell that particular trademark for other company to use. Okay. Now during this time, when they sell a trademark to another company, that company can wait and not use that particular trademark for a while. And once that trademark expires, it does not mean that you can automatically use the trademark. All right. It does not mean that you can automatically use trademark. It means that you can contest it by filing your trademark. Now, once you file a trademark, your lawyer should do a comprehensive research to make sure that trademark is not being used, right? And once they research and say, okay, this is not being used, or if there is an expired trademark for that, they will contact the person and see if they were willing to give up that trademark and no longer use them. Once you contest it, make sure that it's all clean, the person says, I'm no longer using this trademark right now, then you can trademark, you'll become the next register. And once your register goes through, you are the proper owner of that new trademark. However, if nobody did anything in between, so during the time where the trademark expired to the trademark is revived, yes, the person who owned the original trademark can revive it. They can revive it. The difference is they cannot challenge the people between the time where they expire to the time they revive because that's the time that where they, they don't contest it. So that period of time is free for all. Everybody can use it, just nobody can register it. But it doesn't mean that they can continue use. Once it's revived, now the government recognizes that that trademark is officially revived and back to the proper owner. And that is the big problem that uh, our, our friend have right now because it was registered, it expired, and nobody uh, contested at that time and it got revived. So that became a big problem because now every almost every court will go towards lean lean towards first of use versus first to register. First of use versus first to register. So if you think that you created something that's really worthy of anything, trademark it. Don't wait because first of use is hard to prove. First of use is hard to prove. They'll literally ask you, okay, so the first very first thing you sold. Prove that you sold that item so that we'll recognize that you're the first to use. Now, uh, for this particular company, there's a newsletter about their first of use. So it's actually hard to contest. And uh, when I talked to my lawyer, my lawyer looked at it. He's like, yeah, if somebody actually is the third person that report about this already, it's pretty hard to prove that your first of use was earlier. Right? First of use versus first to register. First to register doesn't make you the rightful owner. You had to prove first of use. When you register a trademark, they ask you, when is it first time that you actually made money from it? They ask you to prove it, right? So for us, I just send them the link for um, our Teespring, which shows that this this item is being used and from what day. And that was that's how we register and prove the first of use, okay? So in that trademark, we proved that first of use is for those t-shirts and actually generated costs. That's our first of use. So once it's registered, we're good for five years. Now, recognize this. Uh, each trademark has class, all right, class. And if you don't trim a certain class, it might present problem in the future. For example, if somebody was to make a similar thing, Shadow Smoke Legion restaurant, Shadow Smokers Legion restaurant. And because we register class under tobacco, all right, cigar related goods, it might not have any say towards a restaurant because now that's a different class. You could register all class. There's a crazy amount of class. Uh, number class 34 is tobacco related goods. So if you reg register something that's different class and then somebody use certain things in a different way, for example, they didn't use the same logo, but they use the name. Uh, called Shadow Smokers Region Chinese Restaurant, or just simple Shadow Smokers, or something like for a movie or something like that. I cannot sue them for trademark infringement because that is a different class. All right, that's a different class, and this is where our friend may have a different perspective, may have a different thing, because. Uh, I'm pretty sure the, the registration for that particular item is the cigar class, cigar goods. But our friend is not using his logo for that goods. He's using his logo as a representative of something. Okay? He, 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 it's himself. It's, it's a person. 
uh, it could be uh, he can con consider that as advertisement. He can consider this as a company name. There is leeway just from that. Okay, there is that, but it's very hard to prove because he is, even though he's a person, he is using it for the same industry. All right. This is why uh, my my lawyer is actually the one that says, yeah, start over. Uh, it's really not worth it. Uh, I told my lawyers like, you know. I really hope that you can come up with some good idea. And he's he explained this whole thing to me and says it's actually not that simple. In the end, it's who had the money to continue to argue. All right. In the end, it's who had the money to continue to argue about this case. He is not even a wholesaler. It's product versus an agent. It's an agency. He doesn't sell anything. He recommends to sell. Right? So it's almost like McDonald's versus the person that's taking your order in McDonald's. Right? McDonald's, who makes the product, versus the person. So McDonald's can come up with a product called Big Mac. You can be a person named Big Mac. That makes a big difference, right? McDonald's Big Mac is a product, but a person named Big Mac is a name. So th there is a, a, a class difference. There, that's where he have a little bit of leeway. But arguing first of uh, first of use, versus first of register, versus expired registration, is not gonna be a good room. It's not gonna be a good spot because uh, court recognize first of use more than first register. So even if the thing, even if the registration has expired, it does not mean you lose the trademark. All right. It does not mean it loses the trademark. It just means that they cannot contest during the time. Like the court will not take this side. The court will ask them to prove that they continue to use of this trademark. So it's harder to contest during the time that you did not revive the trademark. It, it will be able to contest the moment they trademarked it. That's why our friend didn't have any problem until recently because they revived the trademark. Martina Maya, how are you doing? You know, really in court is who have better argument. Who's a better liar? All right. In court is usually that's the case. Who's the, who's the better liar? Who is the better liar? Now, when I say liar in court, I'm not really telling you to lie, but what you didn't say. All right. What you didn't say. What you say first, first of what you didn't say is a big difference. You know, for example, if I say something like. This is not bad. If that, that's the that's the statement I make on this thing, I say. This cigar is not bad. That's a statement, right? But what do you automatically assume if I say this cigar is not bad? If I say this cigar is not bad, you automatically assume this cigar is good, right? You automatically assume this cigar is good. However, that's the problem. Just because I say this is not bad doesn't mean this is good. It could be this is mediocre. This is okay. This is eh, or this is great, but not bad just means I have a limited one class from that. I will limit it bad. Everything above that could be it. So in court, it's like that. You don't say certain things. You say something that allows the other side to assume differently. You assume you have to assume something that's different. That's not the same. That's how you win a court case, right? I'm kidding, late night. That depends whether or not Martin's gotta be drunk tonight. <sighs> 56 minutes in. What about halfway? What about halfway? Surrogate animal cracker. Huang Martin. So yeah, in particular cases. In court, your your lawyer has to. It will, it will tell you this thing: silent is golden. All right, silent is golden. Everything you can use in court can be used against you. Say less things actually could win the case because, again, it's assumption. It's assumption. What you don't say is up to assumption, and, and in court, that's very important. Right. So, for example, if you get if you ever get captured by a police, 
don't say anything because they can twist however you know you know uh, are you here to sell drugs you say no well then you're here for some, uh, other trouble you know so by not talking to a police it's usually your best way to win a court because everything you say can be used against you in the court of law and everything you don't say can protect you because i always think like for example if you say something and you forgot what you say exactly if they ask you to testify in court if you say something that's totally different than what they're recording then, then you lied you lied so much best to not say anything be, just be courteous you know officer i would like to call my lawyer blah 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 and i will access my uh fifth amendment right and not plead the fifth and not say anything from this point out until my lawyer arrives you can do that now they gotta uh, intimidate you they gotta say you better you know better write it out blah blah blah, blah. we gotta keep this for 24 hours but trust me it's much better to be kept for 24 hours than be kept for like three years plus some money Now, there are some people that's just purposely looking for trouble. That's a different story, okay? If you gotta walk around like Brendan Chapin and go look for troubles, and then and when the police come to, to, to arrest him, he say, you know what, wait a second, let me punt this bitch, and then turn around and say, now, you can shut the fuck up and get out. That is gonna get you more trouble, okay? That, I guess, I guess hey, you know, keep your mouth shut is much better than saying something. Keep your mouth shut is the best way to defeat anything. Uh, a lot of time by arguing, you're feeding them and feeding them. Uh, now, do I do business like that? I don't. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm a type of person that will beat you with facts until I'm, I'm satisfied with it. Even if I have to go around and around and around, I just beat you with the same fact over and over again, over and over again, until I win an argument. That's how I am because I am the product. Now, if the company doesn't believe in me, there's no point to hire me, okay? If you're not gonna take my advice, why hire some advisors, right? There's no reason. There is absolutely no reason to hire me. So when I go there, my job is to continue to beat the same idea to you and then exercise what's called mere exposure effect. Meaning the more you hear about something, the more you see something, eventually you're okay with it. Okay, that does happen. This is why we have, you know, pop songs that's so... Uh, viral and stuff like that because they repeat the same word over over again that you don't even know what it is who like who give a crap about your name being gucci man gucci 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 man gucci man gucci. what 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 is that supposed to mean you don't have a letter just say you don't have a letter no but because i keep saying it the next time you hear it is like, oh okay now what do i do when i get arrested by the uh, by the police officer I pretend I don't speak English and I say, I like lawyer. <laughs> okay, lawyer. I like lawyer. Call. <laughs> that depends whether or not I did something wrong. If I knew I did something wrong, that's what I would do. If I didn't do anything wrong, I would just be courteous to the police, ask what I did wrong. And depends on that, I access my rights. Uh, do I get arrested often? No. Do I get sued often? Uh, yeah, I get sued quite often. Probably three times a year or something like that. So yeah, in terms of the business world, this is it. This is what they call white collar, even though I'm wearing blue collar. <laughs> this is what they call white collar. Uh, you dress to impress and you fake it until you make it. Um, you spend more money on the packaging presentation uh, than what it's worth. All right? That's what it is. Because you expect to uh, a company that's worth multi-million dollars, multi-hundreds of thousand dollars, to trust your opinion that they can handle their business that way, right? Now, if you can't even handle yourself, there's no way that they'll trust you that your opinion is gonna help them change their change their company to a multi-billion dollar company, which is very important. Now, it's you gotta say, well, Facebook CEO and uh, you know Tim Cook uh, or 
or uh, Michael, they don't they don't dress like that. They wear a turtleneck. They wear a, a hoodie. They wear some crazy stuff. How many pair of silver bracelet have you wear in the past? Zero. <laughs> Zero. Zero. Uh, I've never been forcefully arrested for any reason. I voluntarily to follow them if I needed to. I never got. I I never com committed a felony, so never was arrested. The worst thing ever I, I get was uh, traffic violations, and even that they send you a court notice. They don't they don't arrest you right there. Oh, well, I, I actually got away with it because you know I was somewhat injured and just they just let me go. So. Uh, but they did send me a court notice for that. The car was totaled, so there was no no reason for them to like, hey, you gotta drive away. All right, Matt, thank you for coming. Make sure to hit that like button before you go. Everybody in this chat room should be hitting that like button for this particular cigar. This cigar is worth that like button. So now, so that's the business part of it. Let's talk about how Asian do business. How Asian do business. <clears throat> I got them on once. It was a big misunderstanding. They let me go before I was even put in the car. Okay. I invented a sober brother at the same time being smart and for fun about the, uh, Yes, being honest is, uh, is a good way, but however, it depends on what you do, right? So, talk about how Asian people do business, okay? Asian people do business slightly different than how West people do business. Asian people did business uh, through friends, okay? For example, if you're starting a business, your client usually doesn't find you. You find your friends who recommend you to client, and their friend recommends them to find vendors, okay? Uh, Asian people don't usually trust a company that they've never worked before. Especially uh, something important. They don't trust that kind of stuff. Now, by bribery. Bribery is number one. All right, Bribery. What they call gift. All right, gift. Uh, in Japan, gifting is very often used. Okay, They say gift because they're not paying them. This is, this is a big culture difference because uh, in terms of in Japan, bribery has to be gift. But giving somebody money is very different. For example, for example. Uh, let's talk about something in the great line. Prostitution. Prostitution, okay? In Japan, it's, there's no need to explain that Japan has that kind of services, you know, happy ending and crap. They believe that you're not paying the girls for sex. All right? They're not, they're, you're not paying them. You're giving them a gift of money. All right? You're giving them a gift of money. All right, you're giving them a gift of money. So let's say if you go to an actual whorehouse, all right, the whorehouse charges you for alcohol for the time to sit on the on the, on, the, on the table and give you some food. That's what they charge for. But they charge some ridiculous money for that. Okay, they charge like you know uh, probably two hundred dollars an hour or something like that. The lady comes over. You can choose which lady you want, but. To choose that lady, you had to give additional money, and that as a gift. And you literally say, they will tell you, oh, you would like to give this money to her? And then you'll say yes. You're not going to say, oh, this is what I want, so I'm paying the cost for it. No, you had to say that's a gift, because legally, that is a gift. If you pay that, then now you have solicited prostitution. So they will wait there until you say that's a gift. All right? And usually the lady will come, and they will mention nothing about that money. Nothing of that money, and every that everything from that point on is gift. Whatever that you guys end up doing it, in the end, will be consensual, because uh, it's because you wanted to. There was no agreement that she will do with you or anything like that. It's an agreement. Now for Asia, it's the same thing. When you meet a business owner, when you meet someone important, you will actually give them a gift. All right, you will give them a gift, either alcohol, tobacco. Or it's just simply money. Alright, you, you put in the little envelope, it's like, oh nice to meet you. There you go with your business card on top. That's what you do. 
right? That's what you do. So even if you have a really powerful friend that recommend you, you still have to do that. And um, but however, if once you have a standing in the business, you don't have to do that anymore, right? Once you have a standing in the business, they, it can turn to go opposite way, okay? Now I want to be an opposite way. Uh, now that if I meet a client, rec- introduce another client, I usually get treated to a nice dinner. I, I usually get treated to a nice dinner. Uh, I will receive gift. I'll actually receive gift. And a lot of my alcohol actually is gifts uh, that they brought to the meet. And it's the good thing is that even if I receive that gift and I, I have taken the gift, I don't necessarily have to agree to what he's saying, what this person is saying, uh, or agree to represent this client. All right, I, I don't have to. I don't have to do that. All right, it will take probably two or three meetings before a person have to kind of kind of give a yes or no or give up kind of thing. Uh, usually, that was the case. That was the case. Now, in in the Japanese culture or Chinese culture, it's quite often that you will take your boss to eat. Well, your boss will tell you, hey, let's go eat dinner, but you end up p- picking up the tab. That's very normal, all right? That's very normal. Bribery is like number one in Asian culture. Uh, it actually does. It, just that the word bribery sounds bad, all right? Mutual respect. It, what do you have offered me? I'm already at this position. What do you have to offer me? That's what, you know, it's mutual usage, right? Why, why should a CEO help a underling to grow to a higher position? What is that this guy have for me? Nothing. I'm already the CEO. Why should I do that? Now, I can say, well, because this guy bought me a few dinner. I mean, he will continue buying me dinner, saving money there. So I'll help him out. So that's the Asian perspective of how business will work. It has to be mutual. I, it will never be one-sided. There's not going to be one guy who says, you know what? All I want to do is help you exceed and excel in your work. And keep raising rank. I want nothing back. Don't even pay for my dinner. I'm gonna pay for your dinner all the time, in your lunch, and your girlfriend. Not, not that's not gonna happen. Usually they do it because this person has pays due, right? Pays due. Now we gotta remove the first band. Again, I'm gonna help it a little bit because I keep talking and it will go out. What do you have to inform the police officer? He wouldn't prove what I was doing based on solely off. Great. It's great. That, you know, it makes me feel like a business person right now. <laughs> but this is definitely experience. So, Martin, I think that you should make a goal to also review this cigar too. It's definitely experience. This transition is great. You are going to get, again, some pepper here and there. Not a lot. Very elegant pepper. Vanilla. Sometimes sweet, sometimes salty. Mushroom. You definitely got to taste white mushroom in this one. Tobacco, right? Tobacco is another taste that you got to feel in, the, in this particular cigar. And it's very refined tobacco taste. You can tell right away. Tastes like kind of cologne-ish, but you knew that was the tobacco. Okay. And a little bit of bitterness that comes with that tobacco taste is great. Definitely experience that you do not want to screw up. Yamasa is one cigar that is a hidden gem. They almost could not sell Yamasa out when it first came out. Everybody bought the Nicaragua, uh, the uh, the Escuro, but no, no one bought the Yamasa uh, for the first year. Uh, until later on that year, some people start trying it. I think it's because of the packaging and the red band. That kind of turned people away a little bit. But once people sm- start smoking it, they're like, oh, Yamasa might be the best out of those. So Yamasa got popular in the recent year, but not when it first came out. And the Florida edition is basically the combination of the Nicaraguan and Yamasa. So if you like Nicaraguan and Yamasa, you smoke the uh, Florida edition. Very good stick. So 
right? So in Asian perspective, the higher you climb, the more free stuff you're gonna get, and that's very normal. Higher you climb, more free stuff you get, and no one is even gonna contest that because they want to be that person. So they know they have to pay their way up there, right? So I like to go to Asia for free. <laughs> I like to get Asia for free. I can tell you, me and my wife go to China. We will bring 500 yuan worth of cash. 500 yuan worth of cash, okay? And that is about... 100 bucks, 100, 200 bucks. Let's say it's 200 bucks. We could not finish spending that. We could not finish spending 500 yuan because everything else was paid for. Everything, every time I go out, every night I go out, every lunch time I go out, those things are paid. Those things are paid. I, I don't even pay for my own taxi. They can call. In Asia, it's so easy to call for, for cars to pick you up. I don't even do that. So if I go to China, I, I cannot even spend $200 if I wanted to. So usually I just bring the cash when I'm over there. And, and the end of the trip, I just use that entire cash to buy a cigar. So it would be a few hundred dollars buying cigars and then bring them back because I have no use for those cash. I'll be waiting until after I eat and smoke a nice cigar. In honor of this event, I do not want to smoke on an empty stomach. True, you don't want it. Now, this it is a medium plus tor uh, Grand Toro, so it's bigger than the Toro. Uh, so this cigar is something that you want to have a big meal before I have. Now, what I have for lunch, I had sashimi. I had a whole plate of sashimi. Uh, and then what I have for snack, I had buffalo wing for snack. I had buffalo wing for snack. And for dinner, I had Korean food, kimchi chicken, uh, and some nice... Um, Kuro Buddha pork. That's what I have for dinner. Very elegant. Very elegant. Uh, for breakfast. What I have for breakfast, I had a keto coffee. That's what I have. Alright. So, that's how Asian works in business. Now, it's all word, mouth of words. A lot of people don't... Big business will not do advertisements, okay? So something like me, I will not do I will not do any advertisement whatsoever. I need another person to say, hey, you need help with your business? Contact Tony because he's the one. He's the one. Don't go to any like the firm that doesn't do anything, okay? Now, of course, their firm will also send people out and says, hey, try to use our firm. Our firm's great. Uh, you know, take them to dinner, whatever, all that stuff. Now, sometimes it does a negative thing. They think that cocky people usually has... Uh, has something to show, right? They can't be cocky if they don't, if they got nothing to show. So, you know, me being who I am already, uh, like being very stubborn and being uh, very selective, that kind of worked to my benefit because they think that I'm just being cocky. No, it's because I'm lazy sometimes. There's something that I just want to deal with. So that kind of worked to my advantage that they think that, you know, Tony must be it because... He won't pick anybody. He he will he will listen to you and thing, and then he had to look through your whole entire portfolio before he decide whether or not to represent. And that was because I don't want to get screwed over. Now, have I been screwed over for business before? Yeah, I have quite many times, quite many times. But that you know, take it as a lesson learned, and you learn a, a skill, you learn a, a, something that you will not make the mistake again. And I think this for our good friend this time, uh, this trouble will make him be better what doesn't kill you will make you stronger all right so whatever he decides to do i support it and uh, of course if he decides to go the way of new path he's got my support i'm pretty sure he's got the entire shadow smokes legion support on that particular cases so yeah let's keep uh, uh prayer for this good friend of ours i do not want to mention the name because just in case they do go to court for any reason and mention about this name i don't want i don't want that to be on there I'm, I made homemade enchiladas. That's uh, that's why I'm not I'm here late. I didn't know that I really eat tacos in Mexico. Now taco in Mexico is street food. I mean they they do sell it in like stand. They're like it's it's funny thing is that you don't really eat a meal of taco. You go there pick up taco to eat for snack. They're like street food. So, um, you know there's there's a difference to it. So yeah, like like the same time, uh because I value this friend and I really want him to. Be able to succeed through this particular trouble. That's why we're not gonna mention his name this uh, show. So do not mention his name this show. Uh, that way, uh, we can keep it from this point on. He's gonna be safe from anything that we might have said that could corrupt his case. But because he's a legit person, you know. 
Mm. Oh, yeah. In ta in Mexico, I think that the the thing only have meat and salsa, or what they call salsa on there, and that was it. That was it. Some hot sauce, and that was it. They don't have much thing. They and they will squeeze the entire lime on that thing before they give it to you. So, uh, street tacos are much better than American tacos. I I can honestly say here that Taco Bell is not taco. Now, if you're eating taco like Taco Bell, that's not taco. All right, Taco Bell is um, almost like a burrito if you think about it. All right, Taco Bell is almost like a burrito. I I know sometimes I question whether or not Taco Bell actually use beef. I, I I really don't don't feel like their beef tastes like beef. Cilantro, onion, and lime is all they need. I I like it with some cabbage though. I actually like it with some cabbage in there. It has more bite to it. Nothing like pollo asado or carne asada tacos. I like street food. I'm the, uh, the type of person that will eat crazy stuff. You know, Michael have seen me eat crazy tacos too, right? Michael, yeah. All you, all you people didn't, did not, did not mention to me that was hot sauce. I swear, I will always remember that day, Michael. I will always remember that day. That none of you decide to tell me that is actually spicy. My mouth was burning that night. It was burning. Oh God. Yeah, I need the mixture of the the red onions and the and, and the cabbage in there to shred it in there. Just put a little bit in there. You, don't put lettuce though. If you put lettuce in your taco, that's not taco anymore. I, I slow smoke meat and I pull pork tacos incredible. Yes. Now, when it comes to tacos, I think Americans like to eat beef tacos, but the real tacos are pulled pork. Like, they are just fatty pork. Oh, so good. So good. It, yeah. It's too bad that wasn't recorded, but, you know, you guys, you can imagine me eating a street taco full of green... Chili pepper. It was bad. Oh my god. It was it was spicy. My mouth was numb. And I don't like to waste food, so I just start eating it. But in my mind, it's like, why am I torturing myself? Oh, this thing tastes so good. Oh my god, so spicy. So spicy. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? And I don't even have enough drinks that night. And I was just like dying from that spicy. Dying for that spiciness. I was just, I was, oh my god, what did I do to myself? But you can see this cigar lasts pretty long. One hour, 20 minutes, we're still smoking the cigar and still have like a one third to go, so. Somebody needs to make a real taco for me. I never had one and, and after, listen to this. Yeah, well, you know, go get some nice pulled pork. All right, just season pulled pork. Don't get those barbecue pulled pork. Just season with smoked pulled pork, all right? And then grill that shit, all right? Grill that shit. And then, Pull it into shreds, all right, and then and then get some nice little tiny tortillas about this big, taco shells that about this big, all right. Real taco is not that hard shit, okay? It's the soft, soft tortilla. And got, just gonna put on that grill a little bit, just kind of heat it up a little bit. All right, thank you, Jared. I'll talk to you later. And then put the pork on right on top, all right, and then have some uh, cabbage. Have some red onions, and then squeeze lime on top of it. Stir a little bit, some salt and pepper, put it on top. All right, salsa. Eat it. That's all you need. That's taco. <clears throat> Where did y'all go? I love some spicy taco. I ate that taco with uh, Michael and our good friend uh, in in Arizona, and right next to it, like a club strip. There's all clubs here. Near Fox Cigar, by the way. It's near Fox Cigar, walking distance. Near Fox Cigar. Alright. By the way, um... 
since I am shameless, I'm gonna talk about this, okay? Now, we all talk about the heroes we wanna be, we wanna talk about uh, 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 the things that we wanna do, alright? Now, Michael Wells is very smart, he's a very smart guy. Uh, you know, sometimes you wonder how can a UPS guy make so much money and be successful and have a family and, and become the moderator of Shadow Smokes Legion. You know, everybody asked. But the key, the key to be somebody successful, the model of our Shadow Gaze is not for nothing. He's very smart. Why? He bought the VIP ticket to the Pacific Cigar Show. VIP ticket for the Pacific Cigar Show. He knows what's good for you. He wants to buy that. So, want to be successful? Be like Michael. Go buy a Pacific, Pacific Cigar Show ticket. Get the VIP ticket. Because you got to enjoy that. You, gotta, you, you have spent your money the wise way. And that's how you do it. Be like Michael. <laughs> there we go. Shameless plug put away. <laughs> what you think you think some of those events you go was good. Try to go to Pacific event. Pacific cigar show. I have never been there, but just listen to the, the, the whole event. I know it's gonna be good. Be like Mike. Wrong Mike. <laughs> Be like Mike. Hey, Brittany and Travis. Six tacos and a beer for $5. Now that's money well spent. But all those six tacos and one tequila might sound better. If I want to be like Mike, I'll have to cut my legs off at the kneecap. You're not that tall. It will be blast for sure. I am. I'm, I'm sure of that. Now, of course, to be like Mike, you also want to go to Arizona when Tony the Soy Sauce Assassin go to Arizona. <laughs> Hello, Cryptic Mo. <laughs> they took my legs. <laughs> um. I I have a news, but I can't I can't disclose it yet. I can't disclose it yet. So I'll disclose that sometime next week. Hopefully, I can disclose it sometime next week. It's still in the progress, so I can't disclose that. Uh, da, 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 da. I am debating one thing for Shadow Smokes Legion, though. I'm thinking to register Shadow Smokes Legion as some sort of uh, entity at 2025. 2025, and only because I think by then. Uh, We might do more events, we might do more stuff, and then uh, to be able to uh, run the event as an entity, that would be good. But I would probably do it as a non-profit or something like that. I'm concerned about the FDA rule about not being able to give cigars and stuff like that. But however, uh, if we always run something, giveaways, the legal way, like for example, if you made a purchase, you can do that. You know, purchase the uh, raffle ticket technically is a purchase. So, uh, we might do that, but, but it's something that I want to think far and wide. So uh, it will be something that I will think about and revisit year after year until 2025. So by 2025, we can decide whether or not we want to make uh, Shadow Smoke Legion an entity of some sort. Not an actual business, but entity. So uh, that we can run more things with this name. Because, you know, Shadow Smoke Legion belongs to everybody, right? Belongs to every member in the group. So I want to make sure that it's run right. Uh, it will run as an entity. You will run as uh, a, a, a entity that can sustain itself. Because I know one day, I am not going to be here uh, uh, anymore. One day. I just don't know when. 
one day I'm not gonna be here anymore. I would like Shadow Smoke Legion at that time to be able to self sustain somewhat. All right, you know, because right now we're doing everything with the funding that we earn from you know certain giveaways, certain uh, certain raffles and stuff like that. But however, I'm covering all the red lines basically. We're below the red line all the time, try to do different stuff. So one day someone had to take over and and pretty much handle that expense out of their own pocket. So obviously no one want to do that. I mean, if I would say, hey, Michael, starting from tomorrow, you are you're you are, uh, taking over and all the expenses, then Michael would be like, I can't afford that. So, uh, you know, when we have something that can be an entity, something that can self generate some costs and some fundings, then we will do that as a as a as a legion as a entity that way the next person can continue around this even if i'm not here anymore so because right now if i tell michael to take over and hand on the expense he's gonna go bro broke the next day <laughs> he's gonna go broke oh my god Oh, oof. he's gonna be he's gonna be uh, quite supplies of, of all the expense like website has expense uh, that's yearly basis uh, renewal has expense that's yearly basis uh, our trademarks has expense that's uh, five year basis I think one class registration will cost about two hundred fifty dollars plus lawyer costs and all that stuff so all that stuff is expense uh, which you know I will be I'll be footing for now you know so so you know i we need to make sure that legion one day can sustain that cost because nobody want to pay member fee right now so you know <laughs> and we're not profiting so <clears throat> not only we're not profiting we're always in the negatives <laughs> All of Martin's money is going to the wedding house cars that Stacy wants. Yes, and that's why Martin has his own thing. <laughs> you know, Martin uh, <clears throat> has good supporters, and Martin's continue to gen generate incomes too. So he have uh, a lot of things going on. Uh, you know, people who want to support him should go. You know, using his links. Uh, for some cigar companies and some of the subscription companies and stuff like that, I should do, totally do that because it helps him to continue to create more content. His content doesn't generate money, however, his affiliates does. So make sure to, to support Martin to do that. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize how much it costs, how much time, how much effort, how much equipment it costs. You know, just our good friend needs to replace a laptop. You should know like how much that will cost. All those things does cost quite quite a bit of pretty pennies so um support my team by doing so and also of course uh, uh dad's smoking cigar even though they are sponsored right now it, it it just means that he they need even more even more support because you know they have to have the budget they have to have the time they have to organize the event to continue to generate the uh, the cost to to continue to run those shows to continue to run things to to review cigars and all that stuff so make sure to continue to support them because it does cost money it's not nothing's free nothing's free uh, all of us many people have own stacy and stacy wants it's a real struggle. <laughs> well, Martin not only have Stacy, he's got little Martins around too. Yeah, a ton of time and worked on top of equipment. So it, it's so worth it. We're heading towards Patreon soon. Yeah, I hope that more, more people uh, support their Patreon. Now, we we did make a Patreon page to support the website, but uh, it, it, it probably covers uh, 
about 20 25 percent of what we're spending on our, our website which i understand you know not everybody have that kind of budget so um when you do patreon you do have to watch out for i don't know what your local law is but massachusetts anything over 600 dollars in gift or generated income must pay tax so there's on and offs <clears throat> last year was fine at britney this year i bought vip are we talking about the bong smokers Now how'd you find Brittany again? Here we go. It was a blast. He's right in sitting in traffic. I have you guys' dinner. Number one. Got new clothes, a cabinet, bedroom, five hundred dollars worth. The website is hosted on a shared platform, a dedicated server. It's a shared platform. Dedicated server costs even more. Uh, right now we just don't have that kind of budget to run a dedicated server. I would love to run a dedicated server, however, that is a, a, a normal cost continue on and uh, we don't have that budget because like i say uh we don't have membership fees or anything like that everything on, on that is uh, voluntarily donated and we we generate about 200 something dollars donation plus uh patreon something like that some between 200 300 dollars on patreon uh yes uh last year and we spend probably a thousand dollars on the website here and there so I'm happy to say you cannot fail at something you don't attempt and the success isn't one time you succeeded the success in not giving up along the way I have posted in my classroom I don't believe in failure I think when you try something regardless what the result is you have succeeded you have succeeded to seek for a result, okay? Now, if you fail on it, you have succeeded to use that as experience for the future. So don't look at it as not succeeding or failure. Look at that as experience that give you a result that will pave the way for more in the future, right? So if you start a business that uh, you end up closing down, but you learn a lot along the way, uh, how you run your business and what you did for your business. Right? If you try to attempt something that you never tried before, you have learned the skills that you may not be good at, but you have learned, you have obtained that particular skill with uh, your, your attempt doing something. <laughs> have you looked into Digital, uh, digital Ocean? That, that's where I host my website for the customer equipment that I monitor. Now, is that a uh, dedicated server? Then how much does it cost? And the software licensing, that kind of stuff. I have so many kids, I can't, I remind them daily that what we wouldn't have today if people stopped because we couldn't. Yeah, it's, see, that's the thing. If something is not worth doing, then don't do it, all right? If you think failure is going to stop you from doing something, don't do it. Don't do it. It's not worth it to you. It's not worth it to you. If it's worth doing it, success and failure are both great results. If something worth doing, do it right, right? And if you do it right and still failed, then at least you know you try 100%. And you learn a lesson from that. And that lesson will be worth the effort that you put in, right? So, you you, you know, if something that's worth to do it, you do it. Don't let the word failure stop you from doing anything. Now, if the, the word failure is got to... Uh, stop you from doing something that thing is not worth for you to do you're doing it because you knew that failure was one of the risk my wife always say if you plan to fail have you succeeded in failing <laughs> if you plan it to fail have you succeeded in failing? When I do something, I always plan for the worst case scenario, which is failure. All right? I always plan for the uh, the worst case scenario. What is the worst thing that could happen to you? All right? So when you calculate what the worst is, everything comes as a bonus. You know, it can only get better. Right? It can only get better. So failure is only what you planned. It. So even if you fail, you have succeeded. You have succeeded. 
all right so you have to succeed to learn something that will allow you to try again without that particular failure it's very important you see so you see brendan that's what you've been doing wrong you are supposed to learn from your failures <laughs> all right so failure is not something that's gonna stop failure actually is not fail it's just that it things did not go your way it's not what the ending that you want all right it's the it's, the end result is not ending. It could be the process. Many, many failure. You learn from that. All right. So, you know, if, if people are afraid of failure, we wouldn't have the food we have today. Nobody will try new food because uh, I'm not going to eat that. That's going to kill me. That kind of stuff. So I, I will say failure is very important. And I always plan for the failure. I don't plan for succeed. I plan for failure. And, and, and if that failure didn't happen, I have succeeded. And I'll continue uh, build on top of that. That's how I run things. And that's how I... Uh, give my consultation is I will I will be ex extremely critical. I'll tell you that you gotta fail every single time, right? Your case I'll tell you that's really bad. Now, if your case you plan for the worst and do what can prevent the worst, everything that comes is gonna be good, right? You cannot be lower than rock bottom, right? My personal thoughts process is you haven't failed until you give up growing from setbacks. True. I mean, that, that, I think that is uh, uh, a good way of thinking it. Uh, if, if there's got to be things that set you back, there's got to be things that set you back. I'm apprehensive about many things. Try to plan for failure, but build back on better. I agree with that. Uh, you definitely had to learn from your mistake. Ooh, that's really peppery just now. All right, so. Yeah, I mean, that, that you know, people view failure a different way. But if you view failure is the stop, the end point of what you're doing, then you'll never succeed. How's that? If you view failure as a result, you will never succeed. All right? You got to take failure and continue on. That's the route to success. Failure is not where you succeed. Uh, fa failure is not an end point. If you end a failure, then yeah, you, fa you have failed. Right? You have failed. It's like, it's like a boxing match. It's like a boxing match. You got to get punched many, many times. But so long you're not down for the 10 count, you're fine. You have continued. You can keep going until you knock the other one out, right? You, you you continue to take those punches. You continue to take it. You learn. I say, hey, you know, he's he's gonna throw out all those left punches. He's actually a southpaw, you know. And and, and then you learn. You, you uh, during the fight, you might win so long as you don't give up. But if you allow that one punch to knock you out and you give out for that ten second, then you have lost. You failed. Fifteen oh two is getting down to my limit on the skinny knob, and yes, it's the right size this time. <laughs> when I started Shadow Smoke Legion, I actually think that we gotta only have seventeen members. All right, that was what I planned for. We gotta have seventeen members and seventeen only, and continue on to that seventeen. <laughs> okay, that was the number I planned. Now we have 170. <clears throat> Teaching 10 year olds is definitely a learning curve for them. But I agree with you 100%. It's trying to get them to not give up with each failure. Each failure. Yeah, they learn. You gotta let them know that it's the lesson. It's, it's, it's the lesson that you're going with that give you the result. Now, if everybody give up at the first point of failure, then yeah, we'll never have anything that we have today. Right? It's continue to learn something that doesn't work for you and what work for you later on. Same with cigars. You got to try some cigars that you really absolutely does not like. You got to have cigar going out of you many, many, many times. You got to have a time where you smoke too fast and feel really bad about yourself. 
but you learn from that and you continue and then now you become a successful cigar smoker. So. Oh, have you? I told. Have I told you guys this? There is some report about tobacco can actually cure coronavirus. They're they're pulling anything, everything about new uh, uh, coronavirus out, and they're saying that tobacco may be the cure for for coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, my plan was just that I want to start a group that I can just chat with a bunch of people. Uh, and and share my uh, my hobby with a bunch of people, all right. And that few that like seventeen people might be about right because when we started the uh, the regional stuff, the chapters, we don't have a lot of people, right? We have a, many people that doesn't want to do anything. So I figure seventeen people would be it. And I was saying, you know, let's try to build that, create things that just care for seventeen people. In fact, most of my shows has about twenty people. Most of my shows have about twenty people peaked. And then end up with like ten people left. Yeah, we're all good. There's no coronavirus for SSL. <laughs> well, maybe they are on to something. None of us got it. Yeah, I mean, that literally was the case. Hold on, let me see if I can pull that up for you guys again. Let me see if I can still find it. I, I saw it today earlier. Can you guys read that? Could tobacco cure coronavirus? Don't laugh. Tobacco can cure coronavirus. Now, <clears throat> what I think that might be affecting those people who have coronavirus is they don't go out and go near people a lot. They are smoking the air from this tobacco. And tobacco does have some effect of relaxing your, your body. Now, number one problem with the Wuhan virus is that it will uh, inflame your lung. It will inflate your lung. All right? And then you make it so it's harder to breathe. All right, Joe, talk to you later. It makes it hard to breathe. But if you're smoking cigars all the time, you're taking the draw, your lung is trained to be stronger, right? You have much more power to make your lung inflate and deflate. That might be why that's, you know, that, that's making you go through that. But who knows? But who knows? You know, there's no, uh, no sample size, no nothing. I just think that they want to put up and whatever information they had to, to talk about this particular thing. So I don't think that it's something that has a scientific background however however uh none of the people in ssl has coronavirus so i will say yeah maybe maybe that's the case maybe that's how we uh, avoid coronavirus maybe it sure is secure to your overactive sex life it stops its track what what, what did I miss? What did I miss? Cigar whiskey is my cure for everything. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that all about? That I totally miss. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, you guys are horrible. My wife and... and had a cold a week ago. And I told her to take a shot of whiskey. She told me I was full of shit. But I told her that it will make her feel better. It will. It will. Uh, especially warm whiskey. It actually makes cold symptoms to die down just a little bit. And then really, if you're drunk, you can feel it. <laughs> if you're drunk, you can't feel anything. And that's very important. That's very important. Ah, such a good cigar. You know, this is one cigar that whenever I smoke, I get down to business. I get things done uh, when I smoke this particular cigar. This is one cigar that's no joke. It gets you, calms your mind. You, you really enjoy it. And I almost forgot to keep talking about the cigar because the, the cigar is just so natural. 
so natural. The 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 flavor is just like eating a meal. You know, it's like you enjoy the meal, but you can still talk while you're enjoying the meal. Time will fly by because you're smoking the cigar. This one cigar will worth that five hundred dollar every single time I smoke it. However, when I buy it, it's not worth that much, right? And and when I smoke this particular cigar, I'm always gotta remember this particular cigar. You know, uh, this is gotta be the day that every time right after Valentine's Day, I gotta remember that I share this cigar with you guys on on, on YouTube and YouTube will forever timestamp this particular video. I haven't had a cold open six since we started doing review almost a year ago. Okay, doctor used to prescribe whiskey, and then health official got involved, uh, and that practice got pushed under the rug. Mm, uh, I don't think there's a scientific background on there other than the, the, the thing about cigar dilates and actually uh, thins out your blood a little bit. So that could be you know, why it could, you know, having alcohol in your blood help kill some cells. That's for sure. And that includes virus cells and stuff like that. So there is one guy that cured from the coronavirus by having honey and whiskey. So that, that might be it. But no doctor right now will take that risk to tell you that. It was the wives. I don't know about that. I don't know if wives was, uh, had anything to do with that. Because back in the day, wives don't have a say. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure back in the day, wife had no say. You know, my wife was actually talking about how Africa, you know, cotton picking, farming, that kind of stuff. That still happens and stuff like that. And it was talking about how, like, a woman uh, story about having to work all the time. And uh, the farm owner or something like that has recommended her to go do a surgery that will take away period. Because when they have period, they're in pain and they have to do farm work. It's very tough. So she f listened to her owner, the business owner, and got the surgery done. And she doesn't have the money to pay for that surgery. So she did the surgery. But however, after the surgery, she still have period. So the surgery didn't work. No, it was full of shit. So now the problem is not only that she still had period. She owed the owner a large, large amount of finance money to pay for that doctor to do that surgery. And she still had to work. And then she started to have hormonal problems. She still had fragile bones. And she started to have, uh, you know, all kind of issues. All kind of issues. So she asked me what, the, what I feel about that, you know. And I say, good thing she still had period. I said, good thing she's happy. She's like, why? Why does the surgery didn't work? I was like, can you imagine if the surgery worked? Can you imagine surgery worked? If the surgery worked, not only she gave up the, the, the ability to ha ever have kids. All right, she gave that up for working. And she was going to have face some serious issue by stopping her period. Her, some, some major organ must have been removed so that she won't have that. Right? If not, if not. It's very crucial for her to shred that cell that was creating the wound and stuff like that. If not, it's staying there forever. It's got to clog, clog up. She's going to die. So by having that period, she has survived. Unfortunately, she's in one of those countries that she cannot sue for malpractice. She cannot, you know, stop working because she needs to pay back all this money and all that stuff. And, and she's just in the worst condition ever. Well, unfortunately, you know, education in, in that part of the region is not often you know there's no like let me consult you all the doctor what happened if i will have no period you know and let me consult a doctor what is the risk of this she didn't ask that right she didn't ask that but in the, on the negative side she's now she had to work forever and bear through all this pain on the positive side she didn't die because i think that if she did that and went through and really stopped her period she would probably die Early 1900s, 1900, 1908. 1900s, 1908. Let me take a look at that. Nineteen hundred, nineteen o eight. Well, prohibition started 1920. So that might be part of it too. Because prohibition started in 1920. Knowledge is power. That's all I can say. Knowledge is power. And I always keep knowledge around. Uh, learn whatever you can learn. Learn from your failure. Learn from your success. 
and continue to pass on that in uh, that knowledge knowledge is power and I, I really think that's important now a lot of time where we chat here I give uh, my opinions on science and my opinions on medicals and my opinion on the uh, popular news and stuff like that and what I'm really doing is pass down that, uh, that that knowledge and I think that sometimes uh, people might not think those cold knowledge does anything but you never know you never know that there's a lot of things I learned that was totally useless but it come to a part where I, I it was actually useful one time or another so schoolhouse rocks <laughs> right I think knowledge is very important and being a knowledgeable person really give you the power uh, it's not power to affect others but the power to affect yourself the power to to make a, a smart decision the power to make a good decision for you that will partic- uh, potentially benefit uh, you in the long run so yeah knowledge is power make sure you have everything that you can learn if you know for every opportunity to fail something is an opportunity to learn so now i know chapin is gonna twist that thing around since i fail all the time blah 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 blah, blah so i must be super good but chapin different story being stupid is different than learning from failure <laughs> <clears throat> well, last few minutes, let's talk about things that's not important. All right, last, last few minutes, let's talk about things that are not important. <clears throat> I was surprised to talk to my mother-in-law uh, two days ago. She talked about the pol- politics in America. And she said, who do you think is going to be the president next, uh, next year? Uh, is it going to affect us? And I told her, do you vote? She said, no, of course not. I'm Chinese passport. I said, then it doesn't matter to you. All you have to know is uh, if the Democrat comes in, you're not going to like it. If the Republican comes in, you're not going to like it. She said, why? What's wrong with Trump? I was like, oh my God, my mother-in-law is Donald Trump's supporter? Whoa, whoa. I was shocked. I was like speechless. I was like, I thought you would have hated Trump. I thought you would have hated Trump, but she doesn't. I was like, oh my God, really? She's like, because he didn't affect me this uh, this past four years. I was still fine. I was like, well, no no president is going to affect you as a commoner uh, for four years. For four years. Now, here's one of the things that didn't affect her at all because Massachusetts already have those laws in place. For example, mandatory medical. Massachusetts had medical man, mandatory medical for a long time. Tax. Uh, me and my mother-in-law always pay tax. We don't save tax ever. We never got tax returns. So that didn't affect her either. So yeah, a lot of time we worry about who's the who's got to be the president. A lot of time you just have to think, does it really matter to you? In the end, does it really matter to you? It doesn't. It doesn't. All right. So I, I think a lot of time uh, I see a lot of people uh, talk about presidencies and, you know, bad thing about Trump and all that stuff. But in the end, you should ask yourself. Regardless of what the president does, does it affect you personally? Probably not. Probably not. Let's be honest here. Probably not. All right? Probably not. We still drink. We still smoke. We still work. We still do what we do. We still pay tax. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. One thing that my mother-in-law did not like is that America go to war every single time. Every year we have war. We're always at war. We're always uh, fighting other country. We're always doing some crazy things to other country. I tell her that's actually a good thing. I tell her that's actually a good thing. She's like, why? Why do you support war? Why do you support war? I said, I don't support war, war at all. I don't support war, but I like that our military hardworking and full of practice, full of practice. All right, our our military is most practiced military in the world. 
all right let's say if china decides to say i have i had it and i i'm had it with american shit okay they always tell us and you know, trade war and all that stuff we gotta actually go to war all right let's say that's the case all right let's say that's the case i will be very glad that america has been to war for the last few years you know why because all those people had practice when's the last time china go to war and she's like, oh, Vietnam War, uh, you know, China was, uh, was, um, was involved. I was like, do you think anybody that actually fought the Vietnam War is going to be the next war? Anyone that has actually fought the Vietnam War is going to be the next war. They're going, they'll be grandpa. They're going to be grandpa by then. They, they will not be in the war. All right. So it doesn't matter what experience China have for their thing. Those are actually just trolls like ex j jumping jack jumping jacks you know those are just that but america people are ready american military are ready and they deserve a lot of credit for that because it's hard working you know it, it, it they have they take putting their life in practice right they're putting their life in practice so when it when it really happens america is ready to say hey you really want to do this with us we do this all day long all right we know how to shoot off our guns we shoot people all the time do you really want to play that game? China would never do that. The only reason Taiwan is still safe is because no other country wants China to have Taiwan. Especially US. Can you imagine if, if US did not exist, Taiwan would have been taken over by China by now. You know, Donald Trump says, if you don't return the rights to the people in Hong Kong, we're going to uh, uh, sanction your stuff and tax you. And all China can say is, I don't like it. I, I really don't like it. That's bad. Because they can't say, you know what? You do that to us, we're going to bring war to you. No, they will never do that. They will never do that. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. They know that no matter how big the military you have, unless you test it out, you don't know how good your military is. The best thing is ever ever happened to China, uh, America is Texas belong part of us. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Problem with China is full. They can send a couple million farmers at us, and we will spend our ammo just to shoot at them. They could send soldiers with actual weapons. Then they can send soldiers. Nah, nah. I think th here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Uh, if they gotta come through California, well, they'll probably go through California very easily. But the next few states around them will be able to protect themselves. That I really believe, all right? It, they'll go through California because nobody has guns. But once they enter Arizona and Texas... I will tell you that a lot of those people will be very glad to protect themselves. They're like, all those 5,000 bullets that I have stored in my basement, I can finally use it. Come on, Chinese people! I'm not trying to be racist here. I'm Chinese. I get that. But, you know, but once you reach Arizona and Texas border, try to fight America, everybody will be so excited. I, I swear, people like Michael Wells, people like Martina Maya, or, or people like our good friends and all that stuff, they will be like digging through their stash. They're just like, I'm ready. I'm ready. A whole case of um, of things that put in the boom. I'm ready. You know, they're like, I would love to shoot some moving targets legally too <laughs> you know i i can only imagine they do that all right i can only imagine they do that <laughs> so so I, I i think america is, is if they ever take away the guns it'll be a bad way to do this it'll be a bad way to do this it will be dumb all right it'll be helpless the, w the people cannot be as helpless as people in japan no so that's not the way to do it just look at Korea and Vietnam. They were effective by was sending just waves of men and objectives. You know, they know how to fight. Uh, you know, you, you need to actually know how to do something. I, I think that China, uh, with the big army they have and stuff like that, see, that's the same thing. Like, America did not take North Korea for, seriously for that particular reason. America does not take North Korea seriously for that reason. Because what does North Korea use for practice? Model guns. No bullets. Model guns. You think they just gonna hold something like this? 
Bang, 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 bang. And that's gotta be practice. No, when they actually hold a real gun to go to war, that gun just fly off their hands from the back coil, recoil. So, I feel very safe. Well, I don't care what country threatens America, I feel very safe. So, again, the thing to take away from this is respect our militaries. Uh, in, uh, respect our vets. You should have people that's serving. They are doing really hard jobs. And even though it's practice, it's still hard. It's still very, very hard. And people who go out there and war protect the world, you know, regardless of what the reason is, they are still protecting America. They're still protecting America. So, respect them. Respect them. No matter what war they go to, they're actually just following a rule, a, 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 a command that they were told to. So, respect, because they do follow through. They do follow through. And uh, when's the last time America military has failed an objective, failed a, a mission? No, we succeed. We succeed. So, respect, 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 respect. And again, while I'm here, I'd like to thank all people serving the military. So, uh, it might sound cliche, but I don't say it enough. I, I don't think I say it enough. I, I always like to appreciate those people who serving, who have served. And who have served okay so thank you thank you thank you thank you uh try to do uh, american is that supposed to be a pawn michael <laughs> a lot of the attempt has been shut down <laughs> anyways i fully enjoyed this particular cigar thank you thank you thank you for sending it to me i enjoyed it and i enjoyed the time to talk to you guys uh, it's another wonderful night saturday night i hope everybody enjoyed their weekends all right um i hope that the brownie point that you earned uh yesterday will continue to carry through the week so that you can buy whatever cigars you want trespassing signs we just paint our fence pose particular color purple in your taxes and purple paint on the top fence pose don't matter I don't I don't understand what purple painting your your fence purple is gonna mean, but anyways, <sighs> have a great night, people. If uh, my Tia Maya is gonna have an after party, make sure to join him. He's gonna get drunk. It's hilarious to see it. Okay, <laughs> have a good night, everybody. I will see you guys next time, and uh, I'll put up the thirty plus second review in a little bit, in a little bit, and I will see you guys next week. Half our week, thank God. Safe and sound. This time, Travis not by himself. I have paper to gray. Can't wait to see you again, October. Uh, I hope you make it. All right, have a good night, everybody. I will see you guys next time. Be saucy. Enjoy that drink that I haven't finished. Enjoy that cigar you haven't finished. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for the cigar. Respect the the military and don't get sick. <laughs>